Hi right, guys, it's a little bit rainy outside, so I decided to go ahead and bring my Jeep into the garage here and uh, show you how I installed my dash cam. I found some videos online and they didn't really seem to help me very well. Now I have a Jeep Gladiator, which I'll show you some pictures of here. In fact, you'll probably see it as the title picture of this video, but uh, I imagine this would work the same on any of the Jeep JLs. So here's my camera. It's made by Rexing, R-E-X-I-N-G. I'll post a link to get it off of Amazon there in the comments. It's a 4K camera. What I love about it is that it also has a backup camera, so I'll show you in a second, or a, I should say a rear view camera, right? Now the rear facing camera is only a two megapixel, but that seems to still be plenty sufficient. Um, this one here though is a four megapixel. And I end up having to use an arm mount on my mirror and then to keep it from vibrating, because this is a Jeep, and I do have it lifted, and it does have bigger tires, and I do like rough roads. Uh, so to help with that, I actually zip tied it to the mirror, and you can kind of see I used a couple of black zip ties there to make that happen. The other reason I mirror mounted it is a lot of states, um, my state isn't one of them, but we travel quite a bit. <clears throat> a lot of states actually don't allow you to mount anything to the front windshield. Um, so my little phone mount down there actually would have to come down if we go into those states and You will get pulled over for it, which is super awesome And it's probably a hefty little fine because I know that you won't come back to that state and find it So I just decided to instead go this route and put the camera on my rear view mirror so that one takes it off of mine on the windshield and then two you can see it's practically hid by the mirror so I don't have to worry about being in my vision because, uh, you know, Jeep windshields aren't that big anyways. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start taking this apart and show you how I ran this cable. Um, as soon as I show you the backup camera here or the rear view camera here real quick. So you can see my uh, best friend. He likes to ride around with me. He's 12. His name is Han Solo. I'm sure we'll get a picture of him in there as well. I haven't zip tied the cable to this camera up yet, but that is the rear view camera and I just mounted up in the corner there. And uh, looking out the back window, I did make sure that I got the lens between the uh, wires that are in the glass to heat the window up for the defroster. So make sure you do that or else you're going to have a big line growing across your video. Uh, one thing I did not like about this camera is that it doesn't show you which way is up on the video on the camera itself. And so I actually had to hook it up turn it around, watch it on the screen, and wait until I figure out which way is up. So if you buy this same model of camera, and I hope you do because it's actually pretty decent, um, less that one little fault in the vibrating mount, um, just mount it like this so that the, the cord, if you will, comes out on the right hand side and that way your picture is up. It's just adhesive uh, that mounts like some you know, 3M tape that mounts to the glass. And then I ran it down, it actually drops down behind my C pillar here, and then it's going to come up and run across the cage across the top of the Jeep. And I'll show you how I got that apart here next. So you really only need a few basic tools to make this install happen here. One of them is the little Jeep kit that comes with your Jeep. Um, and that has the Torx bit in it that you're going to need to take the uh, piece off the front of the hood temporarily. Then you're going to need a screwdriver with a small Torx bit in it. And this is a T25. I don't know if we can... Hey, there you go. You can actually see it. So that's a T25 bit. And everything that you're going to need is a 10 millimeter socket because it's a Jeep and you can't do anything on a Jeep without a 10 millimeter socket, right? That's why we all lose them all the time. In fact, I think I'm responsible for about 10% of the lost uh, 10 millimeter sockets in the United States. And then of course the actual ratchet to run the socket there. Um, I also recommend they use a deep well with an extension and you'll see why in a minute when I go to take the part off. So we're gonna start up here on this top rail and you have two screws, uh, one is here and one is here that I've already taken out. And once you pop those out, this piece actually can pry down. And so that's all I did is I just pried it down and it's very difficult to see it because it's tucked in there, but you can see that black cable in there. That's actually the cable feeding all the way back to my camera on the back window there. 
Um, again, two screws up front, two screws on the back. Now, you also have the sound bar. And the sound bar is a little trickier to take down. So instead what I did is I took a piece of stiff metal like a hanger and I slid it through there and then taped the wire to it and pulled it through. It's all open behind that, so it's easy enough to do. Um, and that stiff piece of wire keeps it from dropping down in the either the B-pillar or just somewhere down in that plastic. Um, if you don't have a hanger, you know, anything stiff will work. All right, so to get the handle off here, we need to pop this little cap out. And there's another cap on the underside, and then the two bolts are behind it. You just kind of get your fingernails back behind it, and pry a little bit, pops right out. It's on a little piece of plastic that lets it hang get out of the way. And then you can see, kind of, slide my finger in there, you can see where there's actually a bolt hole in there. And that's where you're gonna put your 10 millimeter socket. So I got this thing loose, I'm just gonna finger roll it here. And it should pop all the way out here in a second. Let's see what we got. And there is our bolt. So all we're looking for, leather, a little bolt of washer on it, easy peasy. Same thing on the underside. All right, so I got both bolts out of here and all we gotta do is actually pull the grab handle off. It just takes a little bit of force. It's got a couple of clips in there and then we're going to bring it up. It's actually gonna bring our speaker cover up with us. So we have that out. That's also just some little clips, so we'll pop that back in when we're done. And there we go and we have it out. Now something really that I liked about this when I did the initial install, let's see if we can get this to show up here. Sorry for the video being all wonky there. See how there's like that pinch shape there, or that arrow shape? You can actually push that back through and I can't do it holding this, I think. So I'll do it in a second and I'll show you. But you can actually push that back through the slot. That's real handy because when you go to mount this thing back up there, these stupid caps flap all over the place. Well, if you pop the little piece out there, you have the cap laying on the floor, you run your bolts into the bolt holes, then you slide those right back in there. So you can see I have that off, right? And so you can see I've just gone ahead and I, I've already finished my install cover, so I've just zip-tied the camera wire and the power wire to the existing power harness wire harness that was going up the frame here. Up here is easy because you can just pry this down. And so you can actually just slide your cable right up behind it. You don't have to do anything to pull this down. You just pry it down and then you can bring the cable out wherever you want down here. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually pull this piece right here off. And this is going to give us a path to get from inside the Jeep to under the hood, which we need to do to get our power. All right, so remember how I said that we need to get out our little Jeep kit, and that's here. And that's because we need this bit here, which is a Torx bit. It's a T40, T40, if you don't happen to have the kit, we do have a tool thing. And then our little handy dandy Jeep ratchet. We're going to use these to take out the four bolts that are on this cover piece right here. You see it just drops right in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop them out real quick, put the camera down, then I'll pick it back up and I'll show you how we get this piece off. All right, so I got all the bolts loosened up here as you can see. Put the uh, little tool back over here so we're gonna need it again in a second. Pull them out. Now the top ones, you see how they're kind of flanged here? So, <clears throat> and they're a lot longer than the ones that you'll see on the side. Uh, they do all, they do match, so it doesn't matter which one you pull out of there. The ones on the side here, obviously shorter. And the same thing, they match in size. So it doesn't matter which way you pull it out of there. So now we just need to get this piece off here. And you can see it just slides over and then comes free. Um, it is a little bit tricky because of having the antenna here. And so I'm actually gonna open the hood up to take this piece off. All right, so I put my tools inside the Jeep there so I wouldn't have to slide off the hood. And then I open my hood up and now you can see, I can slide this up, kind of move it over a little bit, be a little wiggly with it and we'll get it out. 
Um, I assume this is the same on your Jeep, but this is a painted piece on mine, so I actually am going to put it inside the Jeep because I don't want it to get all scratched up. All right. So, now we have the cover piece off, and now we get to the battery. And so what I did here, is you can see my wire runs down the frame. And so I have a single cable coming from the camera in the back that runs all the way across the top over here and down. Then it loops back up because there's a lot of slack on it because the Jeep cab is short and it goes over to the camera. So that's the one cable that you see there. The second cable coming out of the camera is for the power. And part of the reason you're watching this video is because nobody else actually has a good video on setting up where to put the fuses in and how to put them in and what the right parts are. So this is probably the thing in the video that you actually want to watch because nobody else has it. So we've got our power right here. Again, it comes up across this piece here, comes here, goes down. I actually ran it behind this piece of rubber here. And you can actually see where you can pull them apart. And you can actually get it back behind there. So you see how there's kind of two pieces of rubber here, right? So you can get that piece in behind it. And so now that cable that my finger's on right there slides back behind this. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, um, I took my door off when I did this initially. So if you know how to take your door off, awesome, do that. It'll make it a little bit easier for you. If you don't want to take your door off, though, that's okay. And then you have right here two little plastic rivets. And you can take a little rivet popper if you have one and slide it in there and pop them out. And that lets this piece move a little freer. I did try it without doing that. And you can get that cable through there. It's not as easy, but you can get the cable through there without taking the door off and without popping these out. As long as you don't mind just using a finger and kind of prying on this a little bit. Once you get all done, slide it back over so you keep that nice tight seal there. And there we go. So you see where the wire comes down here. I have it underneath this drain tube here. Then I used some pieces of adhesive that I had that are rubber with some uh, like some 3M tape on them. And that just happened to be what I had handy in my garage. Um, I would recommend taping this down with whatever tape you want to use, duct tape or whatever. Just tape the wire down so it's not flapping all over here. In fact, you can see this one actually has already come loose, so I'm going to have to find a different solution here. Um, because that now has dust in it from riding around in my Jeep. And so now it's kind of loose. But I'll fix that back up later. So I just uh, went ahead, taped those wires down so it's not flapping all over. There's a small hole you can kind of see through there. And you can bring that wire through, and there you go. So I went ahead and bought the power adapter kit for this uh, resting camera. And you'll see uh, the part number for that in the description as well, as well as the part number for the camera and for the fuse block adapter, which is where you get to next. So the fuses that, or the uh, fuse adapters, or the expanders, whatever you want to call them, that come with this kit are not the right size for your Jeep. Um, unfortunately, they come with a larger size and what you need for your Jeep. All right, so I went and got the fuses that came on with this kit initially, and that's what this is. Um, unfortunately, this is not the right size fuse for your Jeep. Your Jeep takes what's called a micro fuse or an ATR. And so I ordered this baggie here um, that actually has 10 pieces in it because it was the cheapest solution I could find even though I only needed two. And it comes with this handy little expander. It's got the ATR blade in it and you can see that I have mounted two of these in there. Alright, so you have two power leads that come with this camera. And so the first power lead is for accessory power and that is so that your camera only comes on to record constantly while your Jeep is running so it doesn't wear down your battery. The second lead goes to your constant power. And the constant power lead is so that the camera keeps its timestamp, keeps its programming, but also has a feature in there you can program the camera so that if it senses a collision or you know if something happens or hits your vehicle, it starts recording. And that's great. So if you're parking in a parking lot and somebody hits your Jeep, you actually are going to start recording on both cameras uh, as soon as that happens and then it's going to give you some video even though you weren't there and even though your Jeep wasn't running. So for whatever reason, um, it was really difficult for me to find anybody that could say 
where to plug these fuses in at. And even when I did, um, I couldn't find any instructions on which way to orient them. And the reason that's important to orient it is because you've got the two blades coming out of here, right? And so then you're going to put two fuses on here in parallel. Well, you want the far blade or the outside blade to be the one that actually goes to the power source. And you want the inside blade to be the one that goes to the device that's on the fuse that's already in there. Um, the fuse slot that's closest to the blades is the one that you use for the device that is already installed. And the fuse slot that's farthest from the blades is the one that actually feeds this tap right here. This is important because if you put this in backwards and you have two fuses in it, it's going to look like it works. The problem is that you're actually going to be running your camera through the fuse power of whatever device you're on. So now you've added your camera to the load on that fuse plus whatever other device there is, right? So you don't want to do it that way. And so I actually got a meter out and we tested this. So you're going to want to have your fuses oriented like this. And so your constant power here is this one. And I've marked them CON and ACC. So later when I forget what I was doing here, I'll have those numbers in there. And I just laid those wires back so that we could see them. So this is how you want your fuses, your fuse leads, I'm sorry, oriented. And you can see where I've got a 20 amp fuse for the camera system. But on this particular one, it only has a 10 amp fuse for the device. On the other one, actually, it does have a 20 amp fuse as well. All right, and so the two fuse slots I selected for the accessory power, I selected F57. And F57 on the Jeep Gladiator is your driver heated seats. Um, so those only work when the Jeep is running, so that was an easy one to pick, right? Um, but this is a case where you definitely don't want to <laughs> double up the load on that fuse because those heated seats draw a good bit of amperage. And, you know, if you add too much to it with your camera, then all of a sudden you're going to pop a fuse to your seat. You're going to have a non-working heated seat and a non-working camera. So if you want it like it is here, um, then you're going to be fine because this, again, we've already tested this out and metered it. And even if the heated seat fuse blows for some reason, the camera fuse still works. And if the camera fuse blows for some reason, the heated seat fuse still works. So they are two isolated circuits plugged into the same tap. Down here in your constant power, we used F94. And F94 labeled in the fuse box is TPM Corax. Um, I assume that's your tire pressure monitor sensor, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it is a constant source of power, and again, you can see that we have the two circuits isolated, and as long as you put it in here like this, you're going to be fine. And so you saw how I just kind of had my wire laid over here. Now, if you bring the wires out over here, when you put the cap back on, it actually clears. And then for the ground wire, I just tapped it in underneath the plates right here. Um, any ground source is good. Watch these. These over here are all hot sources, so you don't want to ground off of that for sure. Um, so this just happened to be some bare metal that I found. It had a good ground when I metered it, so I used it. Um, you can also, if you want, uh, these should be take a 10 millimeter nut. Sorry, these should take a 10 millimeter nut here. So if you really want to go crazy, you could actually get a 10 millimeter nut yourself follow some of this paint off of here so you have a good connection and actually bind it underneath these between the two nuts. I didn't feel that was necessary. It's got a good, nice, tight fit right here. So Rexing does not make the camera mount that I used, um, but I'm going to post a link for it down below here. Uh, you can get it off of Amazon. There are several varieties out there. This is the only one I found that actually definitely worked with this. It wasn't very expensive. It was less than 15 bucks, um, and it seems really solid. It actually has a lot of adapters for other cameras, so even if you don't have the Rexing camera, this one will actually probably work for you as well. In fact, that's kind of the great thing about some of these universal parts is whatever camera you pick, and there's tons of them out there, um, you, you can. it doesn't matter. So I like the Rexing because it has the dial right here, and that lets you actually angle the height of the camera. And so I worked it until I had it. So I'm just looking at the very tip of my hood. Uh, maybe a little, I guess probably a little more of my hood than that because it's actually a pretty wide shot. 
Um, so, but I'm not looking up at the sky, I'm not just looking down my hood, I'm actually looking out in front, but I do have, it says, so some of my Jeep is in the picture, so if something does happen, there is a collision up front, I actually have full video of that happening. I also chose to put it right here because that's your SD card. And so with it being right here, it's very easy to you take, you know, your fingernail or key or whatever, slide it in there and the card pops out. So if something does happen, you need that video, you can pull that SD card out, put it in your computer, put it in your laptop, and actually pull the video off of it. Um, when you go into programming here, you can set how long you want each video clip to record for. And so it's by default, it's one minute. I set it to three minutes. Um, just so that if I do have to go through files, I'm not looking at two, you know, 200,000 files, right? Um, so I'm looking at a third of the files anyways. Uh, but you can pick any time that you want in there. The programming on this is pretty intuitive. Uh, they've got a good little booklet that comes with it too. I don't think you need my help to do that. Uh, but that programming is also where you're going to set up if you want to do the shock detection while you're in park, how you're going to put the time in there, things like that. Um, all super handy. And then, like I said, I just went ahead and zip tied there, and then that keeps this thing nice and tight against here. Now, it wasn't terrible on the highway without the zip tie, but as soon as you get into some bumpy roads or some off roads, uh, of course, the whole Jeep vibrates, right? So every little vibration translates into that camera. Um, by holding it tight against the mirror mount, it actually reduced that vibration significantly. So that's what we got, guys. Um, I'll show you some road videos here, like I said, and I'm going to have all the links to everything that I used. But putting it back together is just as simple as putting all the screws back in that you took out. I'm going to show you the one trick with the grab handle here, just so you can see what I was talking about the caps. All right, so I put everything outside here back together real quick, put the hood down. And I want to show you these caps. These are the caps I told you about that you can pop out of here. Um, and what makes that handy is that then, again, you can get to that bolt really easy. You see the slot right here? Once you are ready to put that back in, just orient the cap to how it's going to go on. And you're just going to push that down in there. And again, that little angle, you're just going to pop it in there and grab it. Feed that through there. And then you just can push it on there and just snaps right in. So I'm uh, I highly recommend zip tying your wires up here. They don't have to be super tight, but just again, anything keeps it from floating around or flopping around. And then all your spare wire, there's a big gap but you know, back down here. So just pull it all tight, pull it all tight, make a loop, shove it down in there, and good to go. And that's just it.